This is Yo Soy Bimbo Bob and I have a few opening statements. If you hate watching movies for stuff like this, read the description. It's all in there. Second, um, the reason why I put this together is because you don't need System C to play with Verilog and Verilator. And finally, if you're having problems reading the text in this movie, read the description again. It's all in there. So if you're wondering what I've been doing these past four weeks or so, um, I haven't been doing Minecraft, that's for sure. But what I've been doing is I've been going back to my roots where I was a logic designer and a microarchitect. And I decided that, hey, why don't I try to fire up Verilog on a Mac environment and see what I can do. So the first thing that you're going to want to do when you're going to play with Verilog is you need to bring up a terminal. And the terminal exists in the utilities folder. And you can just double click on it and open it up. But the other thing that you want to verify before you're doing this is sort of what type of shell are you running? And the reason is because all this movie and the instructions are done for Z shell, which is the default shell if you've created a new user in modern macOS. So the next thing you want to do is you want to install Homebrew. Homebrew is basically an environment for installing packages, libraries, programs that you normally find on Unix. And so you do that by going to the Homebrew page and copying this line and pasting it into um, your shell. But th there's something you really should do before you do this, and that's to verify if you have a brew already installed. If you've installed brew already, you need to verify that it's installed in the correct place. And those directions are in the description. And if it isn't installed in the correct place, you're going to need to reinstall it. But warning, you need to um, be aware that if you've been playing with the x86 stuff, um, like in the environment, um, like game porting toolkit, you, you will have done this. You may have two versions of brew installed and you did that on purpose. And so then you're going to make sure that you're in the correct environment, whether you're in an x86 environment or ARM environment before you start doing this. If you're on an M series Mac, like this movie is for, then when you install brew, it actually doesn't work coming out of the box. As you see, brew not found. And so what you have to do is you have to add either to your dot profile or your dot C shell RC, the instructions that modify your path so that you can then find brew. And so that's what's being done here. Unfortunately, I don't have a real good text editor installed on the Mac. This is basically a brand new system and I despise VI. VI is nothing more than a line editor that shows multiple lines at once. I'm old enough to have worked on mainframes and had to deal with line editors. And I am so psychologically scarred that anything that reminds me of that, I just can't stand. Anyway, so I need to install something else. But in the meantime, I'm going to use text edit to modify my .c profile to add this stuff to my path that I need to add. And here I am, it's just setting up a bunch of stuff so that I can see my local folder and all that junk. So finally, we're able to edit the .z profile and put the stuff in. Um, when you do that, you have to quit the terminal program and bring it back up if you put it in um, Z profile. If you put in Z shell RC, you don't have to do that, but you have to open up a new terminal. Now that we can see brew, we can finally install Verilator. Ooh, and here we go, installing Verilator. So as you saw, that went very quickly. And so one of the first things we want to verify is, do we in fact see Verilator? And yes, we see Verilator. Now we can run it and you do this. And there, we're up and ready to go. Verilator is ready to use. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to install is a Wave Viewer. And there's a viewer out there that we can install called GTK Wave. I don't know how people say it. I've just seen it written. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't install by default. You have to actually point to a side install that somebody has created. And the instructions are in the description on how exactly to do this. And unfortunately, even this site install isn't the latest version of the tool. And later, I will give instructions on how to update it to the latest version if you want to do that. But for now, before I get into heavy duty text editing when I create my Verilog files, I am going to install Emacs. Yes, the old ancient Emacs that everyone says sucks, but I love. Anyway. This is how you do it. You go to Emacs for Mac OS, you download the thing, you install it. It's fairly easy. You just open up the DMG and drag the thing to the folder. But once you've done that, maybe you want to be able to call Emacs from the command line because that's the way you're used to doing it, like I am. 
So that's fairly easy. What you do is you go into your .c shell RC and you create an alias to it. And then you include a dollar one when you um, call the program. And that actually passes all the parameters to it. Even though dollar one should only pass one, it ends up passing everything. And now we're ready to create some variable logs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a real simple module called simple.v. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a test bench for it. Then I'm going to call simple top.v. And I'm going to instance simple v in it, which will happen down at the bottom here below this. There we go. There it goes simple. And now we're ready to run. Now all the web pages and the YouTube videos that I watch that talk about installing Verilator always installed systemc also. And you really don't need to do that. What you can do is you can run Verilator with a dash dash binary option. And what that does is it creates an object file that you can run directly. But hey, I'm going to act like I did this on purpose. I've got some syntax errors that I need to correct. And this is just showing what Verilator is a pretty good tool for linting. Which is actually like when I was really working at a real job, we used Verilator as a linter. Um, and the reason we did that is for a couple of reasons. It's really fast. It's much faster than other linters. And the other thing is it actually it would lint on errors that really aren't true errors, but cause problems in performance when you're running your code. And so anything where you could handle something as a vector, but you would you know, smash things into bits, and then you wrote the equations in such a way that you sort of created a loop at the vector level, it would complain about that. And so if you rewrote your code to get rid of all those errors, then um, your code would run a lot faster because the, in the simulation, it didn't have to bit smash everything if that was vectors. So now that we've got the Verilog running cleanly, we can finally run the object file that got created for our simulation. And we ran it. And one of the things that probably run in immediately is there's no dump.vcd file that I'm looking for. And the reason for that is you actually have to add a, uh, an option onto Verilator when you create the object file. It's the dash dash trace option. And now that we've added the option, we can recompile. And once we recompile, we can rerun the object file. And once we rerun the object file, we can find it. There it is. We now have run the simulation, and there should be a dump file. And there it is, dump.vcd. And so now we can open up that dump file with GTK Wave. Oh, and so we can just, there's the top. We can select, it's very hierarchical. We can go select all the signals that are sitting at the top level. And we can view them. And... Oh, look, B isn't changing another bug, which is the whole reason why you have something like GTK Wave. And I'm going to pretend again like I did this on purpose, but I actually didn't. And so I need to go figure out what my bug is and go fix it. And during debug, what I determined is I have basically state that's called hit reset. And I was setting it to a zero instead of a one if I saw that it was zero at the beginning of the simulation. And once I fixed that, the bug simulation was fixed. But now we're going to move on because at the very beginning, I said when we installed GTK Wave, initially, it's not the latest version. There are actually some bugs associated with this thing. If you try to reload or do anything like that, it core dumps. And so what we want to do is we want to install the latest version so we don't run into those issues. So the first thing that we need to do is uninstall GTK Wave. And so the way you do that is you type brew uninstall GTK Wave. Then the next step is to edit a file that got installed when you installed GTK Wave. And that's slash op homebrew library taps random plum homebrew dash GTK Wave GTK Wave dot RB. And once we open up that file, we're going to point the head back at the original GitHub repository for GTK Wave from the side copy that we were pointing at. And finally, we're gonna add a dependency to GTK4 at the bottom of the dependency lists. And now we can reinstall GTK Wave using the exact same command that we used to install it the first time, but now it's gonna pull the local file that we've edited instead of the one that's sitting in the GitHub repository. And so we'll end this video by pulling up GTK Wave again and validating 
that it doesn't have the bugs from before. What we're going to do is we're going to go open stuff up, display some of the signals, show that it's working, that we're counting, and then we're going to reload the waveform and it doesn't crash. Woohoo! So we're done. So, this is Yo Soy Bimba Bob saying, don't be like me. Like and subscribe.